All right. Um, this is actually something a little different. You know, I try to bring some different cool stuff to the board. Uh, this is a content creator that I actually enjoy. I'm going to give you an example of a couple of his pieces of content after it, but there's something I want to focus on first that I thought was really interesting. What this content creator mostly does is there are some people, black people, <clears throat> who will claim that historical um, non-black characters are black like they claim that buddha was black or that jesus was black or that you know a bunch of different things and he fact checks them but he fact checks them in a way that's not racist and i know that sounds weird but i feel like there's a lot of people on the internet who would use this as an opportunity to be racist towards black people right and i come from the take that i think that there's a reasonable argument to be made that there are people especially black americans who feel like they're and they're not, not even feel whose culture has been robbed from them that's the reality like black so like black people in america you know if you were if you're a descendant of slaves which 80 percent of them are you're you know, or abraham lincoln yeah they claim Abraham. 80 percent of black people in america were slave or the, the descendants of slaves they had their culture robbed from them that's just the reality of the situation um, and so I think that this is a kind of a, a goal to reclaim some of that in some capacity, even if it's wrong. So what about God as a woman? Maybe God is a woman, bro. I don't know. Um, this video though was interesting and it like kind of troubled me almost. And I just kind of wanted to talk about it. Okay. So let's start this off here. Um, you probably seen a lot of videos like this. William Shakespeare was black. Jesus was black. Jews are black. Vikings. Some are. Lenny Kravitz. Were black. Yes, indeed. The original Buddha was black. I watched his Vikings were black video, and it was so interesting. The reason why that person was saying that is because the 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 murals, or there was like uh there was paintings or whatever, carvings out of wood, and the wood was black. So they're like, see, Vikings were black. That was the whole basis for it. It was actually rather interesting. I don't care what they tell you in school. Cleopatra was black. And guess what? The gladiators were also black. Yeah. So in response to them, I decided to make something fun and educational and started a series of videos about actual black historical figures in other countries. And I'm going to watch one of those after because I'm very interested in that. And that's another thing I appreciate about it. I made a video about famous Russian poet Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin, about the Russian nobleman from Africa, Abram Petrovich Gunibal, and about so-called black samurai Yasuke. But then, a creator named the throat singing bastard made this stitch with me. It's something very interesting, let's see it together. When you see them claim that a historical figure that we know for a fact was not black, when they claim it's black, it's not that they don't have historical figures or their own, or that they don't recognize them, or that they don't want to recognize them. It's that they want to take yours. It's a really interesting idea, and I'm surprised that it never occurred to me. I so here's the thing, because I love this creator here, but I fundamentally and vehemently disagree with the, what that original person had said. Like I said, I love this guy's content. I think that he debunks um, the some of the narratives coming from some black creators saying that a lot of non-black people, historical figures like Buddha and the Vikings, etc., were all black. But he does it in a non-racist way. This, though... I am uncomfortable with because realistically speaking, I truly believe that the majority of this comes from the fact that black people, specifically in America, specifically descendants of slaves, which is 80% of black people in America, they had their culture robbed from them when they were enslaved. And I think that, that this is a response to that. It doesn't make it okay, but I think that instantaneously assuming the worst, as if these individuals are trying to just rob things, it's just to me, I mean, I, I think it comes off... I think it comes off as racist. Um, assuming the worst of somebody for no reason, I just, I, I just fundamentally disagree with it. I think as human beings, we should look at somebody from a human perspective. And when you see a lot of black creators saying Alexander the Great was black or all the Vikings were black or all the gladiators were black or Buddha was black, I don't think it comes from a place where they want to steal. I think it comes from a place where we have historically had education in America specifically that has in the past excluded the proper representation of black people to a point where they're just disgruntled and frustrated with the system. And they just don't trust any of it. And that makes sense to me. So I don't think it's them being malicious. 
Um, and I think that that's the wrong way to look at that. I think it's an unproductive conversation to have. If you look at the COVID numbers of people taking COVID, uh, and, like vaccinations, you'll see that uh, Black Americans didn't take it as much as like a lot of other groups of Americans. And I would say that it's reasonable to think that because Black people don't trust the government, and why would they? They used to be fucking slaves. They were, they Black people weren't considered people until you know nineteen mid nineteen sixties. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like why trust this government? I get it. Um, and so that's the, that's my big, when I watched this on TikTok, I wasn't going to talk about this until I heard that. And I said, I'm going to stop the video here. This is where I stopped it. And I want to talk about this publicly. And that's where I want to, I want to, that's why I wanted to do this video. I think it's an important topic that I would like to talk about. Always attributed the blackwashing to the childish desire of being your favorite hero, you know? And I don't think it's that either. Living this life. I never thought that this desire might be actually malicious. But come to think of it, isn't that true that every political movement tries to show its power as soon as it comes to power? I suppose. When I was a kid, I was a huge fan of Grand Theft Auto series, and I remember okay. it being constantly attacked by right-wing activists. Sure. The cases of a lawyer Jack Thompson against Rockstar were incredibly famous at the time, but there were also different associations of Christian mothers and whatnot trying to ban rock concerts and violent video games. It wasn't enough to just believe in God for them. They had to take something from you. Why? Because that's what every political movement eventually does. Now we live. I guess that's an interesting comparison. I think that conservatives just think that it's violence going to cause more violence. But I mean, I disagree. I think that if anything, that's going to be an outlet for people's aggressive nature. So in the time where culturally the left wing is in charge. They are not interested in black heroes of old or female heroes of old. They want to take yours. Simply. I don't think I agree with that. I, I don't like this framing of this video. I feel like it's very malicious. I will say that, obviously, let's be real, there is a lot of forced inclusion nowadays. Noah Sanford became Hey, thank you so much for the membership, and I'm waiting for your, your donation to come through so that it reads it for itself um, instead of me reading it, okay? So don't worry. I got you, buddy. Thank you so much for the small gut. Um, I don't... Oh, there is a lot of like forced inclusion nowadays. Historically, it feels like when there was inclusion of something, it felt very natural and organic and nobody complained about it. Um, but nowadays it feels like they're making, especially remakes, they're making remakes just to forcefully include things. Uh, Little Mermaid felt like that. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs certainly felt like that. And it makes you roll your eyes and go, ugh. And frankly, I don't think that... Papa Gut Chair Super Chatted $5. I love you, Papa. I love you too. I'm gonna fart on you. Don't worry. Um, I feel like if, I I feel like forced inclusion movies. I don't know who that's for. I'm sorry. I don't think that like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I don't think that people of color are like yes. Finally, uh, I think that is mostly for annoying white leftists that um, feel comfortable with forced inclusion because it makes them feel like they're doing something positive when they're not. So, you know, that's how I, f I just don't know who is that supposed to be for. I don't know if there is a whole uh, group of people of color that are like, oh, my God, thank God that they did all these un like changes to the Snow White movie. Who can No, but I don't think anybody really cares. <laughs> I think it's just for like left, like people to feel good about themselves. Because they can, simply to demonstrate their power. The throat singing bastard is given a nice example of Warhammer 40,000 Ultramarines. Please watch his videos for more detail. What? But I, as a fan of comic books, couldn't help but notice that in recent years we had female versions of Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, Thor, Hawkeye, Loki, Black... I don't think that there's any thing wrong with having female versions of particular characters i just think it's generally better if they make a new character so if there's a female hulk but it's a different hulk which it is that's a good idea if there's a female thor but it's a new thor it's not it's not it's not like oh thor went through a sex change that's a good idea i think you get into you muddy the waters when you start uh, race or gender swapping um characters gets a little iffy it can be fine if you look at those shows sweet tooth um the character from the comic book like i think the big man they call him is white i believe but the, the character in the show is black but nobody really cares because nobody's like super examining it uh thank you so much for the upgraded to large gut from slurposaurus i appreciate that brother panther practically everyone why because they can yeah but there's nothing wrong because they're making new characters it's just a show of power and since i don't think that's, that's a weird frame it's not like a show of power it's just a new character, and that's what people are always asking for, new character. That's, in my opinion, like the right way to be inclusive. Make a new character. 
makes the most sense. If we're talking about the female power, how can we possibly forget this beautiful and powerful woman taking what's rightfully hers? I dare you to try... Come on, man. That, I got that slide. I felt, I, I felt the slide transphobia there. And stop me from going into a women's bathroom. Oh, my God. What I'm trying to say is, the so-called... <laughs> I love this guy. It's a shame that he's getting a little bit... Uh, okay, I still like this guy a lot. I, I'd be cool if I could ever talk to him. Show of power. Taking what doesn't belong to you is nothing more than a simple bullying. So, regardless of your political beliefs, I implore you, please, do not be a bully. Pen uh... Disagree. I'm gonna do what I want. Then I will swing back eventually. Right wingers will be in charge of the culture again in ten years or so. Probably not. Um there is always a pendulum shift. We saw two years ago under Trump that was the pendulum shifting to the right. Uh it will go right to left to right to left, but it will always swing harder to the left. So we'll make more progress in left leaning areas and we'll go back a little bit conservative, but then we'll go back. It's like two steps forward, one step back is what's most likely going to happen. And it's very important for us to remember. It's not about lefts or rights, black or white, men or women. It's about not being a bully, living and letting live, respecting others, even if your political opinions made you think of them as enemies. So please, never be a bully. Yeah, and I get that. And I think it's always good to try to reach across the aisle and, and you know humanize people that you disagree with. But sometimes more people have skin in the game. So when it comes to some people, especially like trans people who just want access to gender-affirming care, um, for them to you know, have the opposition think that, you know, religious conservatives to oppress them by removing their right to get that based on anti-science, because that is unfortunately what the conservative party in America is. Uh, I could see why they'd be more angry. And you could, I know some people hearing that will be like, well, they're not anti-science. Like, you know, gender doesn't make any sense, blah, blah, blah. Just understand that the science Gender, like the science, like mental health science uh, is on the side of trans people. Gender science is a real science. It's an observed science. It's not like, it is not a, it is not an external thing, if that makes any sense. It's not external, objectively proven. It is an internal philosophical experience that people have, much like religion is, non-provable. We should still respect it. Um, they are anti-science. Let's be real when it comes to um, climate change. When it came to COVID, they were anti-science. Um, they're anti-science when it, uh, I mean, I just, you know, in general, creationism, you know, fundamentally speaking, I'm not saying conservatives are bad. Became a member. Thank you so much for the small gut. I'm just saying that overall, understand that a lot of the policies that conservatives, religious conservatives are implementing are anti-science policies. And it's, it's a trend across the board. And it's something to just like keep in mind when you hear the facts don't care about your feelings. These are usually people who aren't utilizing objective data or statistics. Um, they're kind of just going based on how they feel about things. So just to be very clear, just wanted to throw that one out there, boys. Thanks to Throw Singing Bastard for his amazing input. And thanks to you, dear viewer, for watching this video. Okay. Cheers. So, you know, a little disappointing video, but I still like this content creator and I want to play maybe uh, one or two of the videos that I found were interesting from this individual. So, let, is this what we just You've probably seen. Oh, this is probably what we just watched. Um, so, I'm gonna we're going to watch a couple of them. I'm going to watch The Black Buddha. I thought this was an interesting one when I watched this already. So, I'm going to have you guys get like a little bit of a taste of what made me enjoy this content creator. Fun fact, the first Buddha actually came. This looks like I show speed is trans, bro. That's fucking crazy. Came from Egypt and he was black. Did y'all know Buddha was an African? Yes, indeed. The original Buddha was black. Krishna means the black one and Buddha means the black face. Oh, crazy. Fuck a Buddhist monk because these monks don't want to recognize the original Buddha. Buddha was actually a black man. <laughs> Every day reality looks more and more surreal. It always amazes me how confident a person can be once they are unburdened by the intellect. Human mind truly has no limits when it's empty. But let's treat this claim seriously and listen to the arguments. <clears throat> Look at the Buddha's hair. No Chinese person's hair. This person said that there are many Buddhas. I wonder if that's true. I don't really know too much about it. Look like that. The Buddha has knotty hair. Every time you see the Buddha, his hair is knotted. Apparently there are 28 different Buddhas. Just a thought. Now that's what I mean when I say that the less we know, more confident we are. Buddha's hair is not But they do say that uh, ignorance is bliss, am I right? Um, 
actually hair. It's 108 snails who sacrificed themselves to protect his head from scorched sun while he was meditating that is pretty cool i wish i had snails that were ride or die for me because when i go out into the sun i'm literally fucking bald and i'm diabetic so one of the medications i take it makes me more sun sensitive so i could use they said what 28 snails how many snails was it because i'll need like twice as many 108 snails yeah i'll need like 200 snails i have a fat head from scorched sun while he was meditating it's one of the most famous legends about Buddha, and before oh. claiming him as your own, you probably should study his life enough to know it. But let's continue. If you look at any of the original pictures of the Buddha, you'll clearly see the Bantu knots, woolly hair, and clear African facial features. As you can see, me and the Buddha have similar facial features. I don't see it. This person, the, the Buddha looks like he was getting his eyebrows done. Um, but okay. According to the legend, Buddha was from Nepal, and that's how a person from Nepal looks like. Or this. Or maybe this. You can clearly see that the depiction of Buddha used as a proof of him being black, clearly inspired by Nepalese people. But even if he wasn't from Nepal, statement that if you have full <coughs> lips you must be black is something Joe Biden would say. That's how <laughs> like an interesting. a Chinese person look like, for example. Or Vietnamese person. People all over the world look different. Well, I will say, and like those could be their natural features, because different people all over the world have different features. But my understanding, and I could be 100% wrong, and if I'm wrong, you can criticize me in the comments, but this is my understanding. A lot of Asian people are born with uh, no eyelids, and a lot of them will get uh, surgeries to give them an eyelid because it adheres more to Western beauty standards. And the only reason that I bring this up is because, again, I could be wrong about these individuals, they might not have gotten a surgery. But if they did, it also might be likely that they got other surgeries as well. Um, so just something I'm throwing out there. So, yeah. For example, or Vietnamese person. People all over the world look... Apparently it's 50%. I'm just looking into it now. 50% of Asian people have uh, have no eyelids. Or, or they call monolids instead of double eyelids. Sorry, that's what it would be called. Um... So, but the majority of Korean population apparently has monolids. I wonder how they classify Asian people. Um, so is that exclusively Korea? I don't think it is. I mean, I just looked it up like 50% um, of Asian people only have, they have monolids is what, what it's called, but it's something good. It is something that is a pressure on some Asian actors to get eyelid surgery if they want to work in the industry. So different. You cannot claim the whole Buddha <laughs> just because on one of the thousand statues, he has full lips. And now, to the last argument. Krishna means the black one. In Dude, how, uh, Dr. Umar is always speaking non-facts. <laughs> Just every time he talks. It's funny. Buddha means the black face. Buddha means enlightened. And Krishna, yes indeed, means the black one. But the thing is, Krishna is not Buddha. <laughs> so it's not exactly relevant to the conversation. Now that you know all of that, I want you to rewatch the beginning of the video simply to enjoy how confident, how loud, and how terribly wrong people can be. Remember this next time somebody is constantly yelling nonsense in your face. Now enjoy. Okay. I like that one. That was interesting. Um Let's watch this new one I haven't seen. Beethoven Beethoven was white. Was Beethoven black? He was not. But okay. let's watch your video anyway. Rumors that his ethnicity has been whitewashed have been circulating for decades, but have gained new steam in the age of social media, in part because of an article put out by a student-run college paper called The Concordian. In well, if it was a student-run paper, they must be right. Because, you know, just so you guys know, students aren't at school to learn. They already know everything. 2015. Well, let's look at the evidence from the article. First evidence is that Beethoven's parents were likely Moorish because they were born in the territory controlled by Moors. In reality, Beethoven's mother was born in the village called Ehrenbreitstein, Germany, and his father in the city of Mechelen, Belgium. People from Germany and Belgium are the definition of European people, and that was also the case for the 18th century when Beethoven was born. The second evidence is his death mask that has white thick-lipped mouth, short thick nose, and proudly arced forehead. I mean, if I had to assume his death mask, maybe those features were considered nicer looking. And that's how people in the past, or I guess even today, will do stuff. It's like we photo uh, shop stuff now, but back in the day, people 
would pa- paint themselves or have themselves painted or um, we'll say memorialized or immortalized even uh, making themselves look good. Like I think it was Queen Elizabeth or not Queen Elizabeth, one of the queens, one of the older queens back in the day. I forget who she like she used like very heavy lead makeup and she loved candy. I forget which queen it was. Um, and so her teeth were rotting and falling out. She had like terrible breath. Apparently, uh, her hair was falling out. She looked fucking terrible, but every time she was painted, she looked amazing, you know? So it's something to also keep in mind when it comes to that. That's it. That's all evidence from the article. But is there any truth to this? No, there isn't. Well, he was often described as having fuller lips, a broad nose, and darker skin than most Europeans. Me too. Except for the darker skin. But I don't have a dad, so... And I'm afraid of dogs. Um... (sighs) (laughs) And the whitewashing of historical figures is certainly... And I am a little ashy sometimes. Uh, My wife always says I should put more lotion on my forehead, but I don't know why I get so... I don't know why I get so dry, so much dry skin. Nothing new. Oh, yes, that's nothing new. Something new would be blackwashing of historical figures. That's certainly in fashion. But black studies scholars and musicologists have not found substantial evidence to support this theory about Beethoven. Okay. Oh, so you knew from the beginning that this theory doesn't hold and decided to make a video about it anyway. Well, at least they admitted it in their video. I wonder why. But why is the assertion that Beethoven might have been black such blasphemy in certain circles? Because there are still certain circles they don't like to be lied to. Unfortunately, there are less and less of them each day. And more- what does that mean? Sorry, I missed something. Video about it. Found substantial evidence to support this theory about Beethoven. Oh, that was Queen Elizabeth the First. There's so many Elizabeths, bro. That name's not even nice. So you knew from the beginning that this theory doesn't hold, and decided to make a video about it anyway. I wonder why. But why is the assertion that Beethoven might have been black such blasphemy in certain circles? Um, I guess yeah, because it's just kind of wrong. It's not right. It's weird that you would claim that. Now, of course, if Beethoven was black. And there probably would still uh, be feelings of blasphemy from some people that had were learned that he was white and then they would be questioning their reality and they'd be upset. And maybe there's a level of racism with that. But we don't even really have to engage with it like that because Beethoven was a white guy. So because there are still certain circles they don't like to be lied to. Unfortunately, there are less and less of them each day. And more importantly, why are we not more familiar with black classical composers such as George Bridgetower, Edmund Dede, Amanda Aldridge, or Samuel Coleridge Taylor? Those are good questions. I don't know anything about them. That's a conversation about the way that we educate people. If they did have a significant impact, we should talk about them more. You know, I don't know if they did have a significant impact, but if they did, we should talk about them more. Because you, Dara Star Tucker, prefer to make videos with lies about Beethoven instead of truths about George Bridge Tower. Ed- well, I don't think that that's necessarily fair. It seems like this person was parsing through information. I think that that woman's video is pretty solid, if anything. It's not really her fault that she doesn't control the entire institution of, you know, Western media or Western education, you know. Edmund Dede, Amanda Aldrich, and Samuel Coolidge Taylor. It is your conscious choice. If we can answer those questions, we might start to understand why Beethoven's ethnicity has been a point of contention for so long. These are great questions, Dara, and I'm glad you... Yeah, again, I think it goes back to the first video we watched. I think that there are a lot of black people, especially in America, who've had their culture robbed from them, um, who, if you look at Thomas Sowell, you will see that they had adopt. They seem to have adopted their culture from a mixture of you know poor people in in some as part of Europe. I'm paraphrasing, of course, as well as some of Southern culture in America. And now they're looking back and saying they, they've learned through American history a bunch of different American. Um, they look at what's taught in American history or in schools in America about historical figures. And there are really no black figures that are taught. And so they're appropriating them as a way to almost reclaim their culture. That's, that's the idea or reclaim a culture. So, I mean, you could honestly chalk it up to historical trauma. I don't think that that's necessarily unreasonable to assert or you made a whole video filled with misconceptions just to ask them in the end like it's the truth's duty to find excuses for the lies but fortunately these questions of yours have already been answered by a renowned american doctor of arts and his apprentice in 1999 according to the studies black americans are desperately looking for great black composers among white historical figures instead of celebrating their own for one simple reason motherfuckers act like they forgot about dre thanks for watching this video <laughs> okay was ba- Interesting joke. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, interesting segment to me. 
I think it'd be cool if I could ever have a conversation with this guy because I feel I obviously disagree with some stuff, but I overall like this content creator. So uh cool beans. 